Hi again. So I am excited to work on a new project, which is making a little mini book. And this is homework for Jill Weber's class, which is the second class in the expressing course at Sketchbook School. And, you know, Jill showed us this fantastic series of books that she's made about her garden and about her history with her husband and so forth. And now she's asked us to make our own little book. And so I'm going to undertake that. I have to be honest with you, um, it makes me a little bit anxious because it's actually like a whole project that needs to be thought through. It's not just doing a drawing of something sitting in front of me. So um, I'm going to have to give it a bit of thought and imagination. And it also involves kind of making something physical, which isn't really my strong suit. Um, I took a bookbinding class years ago and I learned something that I'd always wanted to know, which is like, how do you actually make a book that looks like a real book, not a pamphlet, not a booklet, but a real book with a spine and lots of pages and, you know, end papers and all that kind of stuff. So I took this class and I learned the basics of how to do it. And in fact, I made, you know, probably at least a dozen books, but they were all kind of wonky. I'm just not capable of doing things in a neat and fastidious way. And bookbinding involves, um, lots of sharp instruments like exacto knives and scalpels actually that's what i use to cut stuff scalpels um paper cutters in fact the paper cutter at the studio where i took bookbinding classes was so lethal that you had to take a special class just on how to use this cutting machine it was so powerful that to demo it they would take a yellow pages an entire phone book and they would put it on this cutter and wham, it would cut through the entire book. So then they would tell us a few horror stories about people losing fingers and arms and, you know, other appendages. So anyway, that just compounded my anxiety about this whole thing. But it's not just cutting that's an issue with me. It's also gluing. You know, ever since I was a little kid and I used to make model airplanes and cars and stuff like that, you know, I would always end up losing pieces. I would end up gluing pieces to my fingers. I would end up with cars that had huge unnecessary lumps of this sort of uh, cement on them. That's what it was called, that airplane glue. Um, I would get dizzy from inhaling the airplane glue. And just in general, it was messy, you know. I, I And I found even when I was doing regular book binding that I would often drip blood onto the books that I was making and um, other stuff. So, as I said, I'm, I'm approaching this project with a little bit of hesitation. The book I'm gonna make is pretty simple. She's shown us a way to make a book that basically involves taking a single piece of paper, making two cuts with some scissors, and folding in such a way that it makes a nice little book. So, that's what I'm gonna do. I sort of have an idea for what I want the book to be about, but I keep changing my mind about that. Um, and again, I feel a little bit of pressure because I'm making a video about make, doing my homework. So that's just kind of upping the degree of difficulty. But whatever. It's going to be fun. I love making books. And I've made books of one kind or another since I was, you know, four or five. Again, lumpy, blood-covered, off-center, weird ones. But books nonetheless. And so when it comes to actually filling the book, I think I'll be okay. But, um, well, enough to do. Let me, uh, let's get started and figuring out how to actually make this book. Okay, so Jill um, made us this little um, instruction set for how to make the book. And, and I copied it myself because I wanted to see if I could understand it better. So basically the idea is you take this piece of paper and you fold it in quarters. And then you fold the sides in, I think. And then you cut it. You open it out and then you hinge it around and so forth. So I think I understand it, but um, I, I did try and make one before and I completely screwed it up. So I'm gonna take another piece of paper and um, just get a blank sheet of paper. See, even this, you see? Like I'm trying to, God damn it, I'm trying to rip this piece of paper neatly 
and it's shredding on me. You know, this is just the way that it is when I try to do anything kind of in a neat, organized way. And that's what I'm trying to do here. I really want to try and do this well, you know, for my own benefit as well as because I'm making a stupid video about this damn thing. Why did I give myself this challenge? All right. So here's a piece of paper and let me just open my instructions again to make sure that I'm, that I'm actually doing what I'm supposed to do. Okay. So here's a piece of paper. The first thing you do is you fold it in half and then you open it, I think, and then you fold it in half again. There we go. Fairly close. And there you go. Now you open it flat. And then you fold in the sides. Is this correct? I think it is. You fold in the sides and like that. Okay. So there we go. And now, you know, I was always terrible at origami. And that's what this is starting to remind me a bit of. You know, I could never figure out how you pull the thing out. But anyway, um, so yes. So there we go. Now we have that worked out. Now, how does this part work? I think it's, oh, it's here. I think it's this. Yeah, so it's this, and then you take a pair of scissors, which I happen to have here, and uh, these are these are really good scissors, by the way. They are called doll, you know, and I just remember when I was a kid, my mother had really, had one pair of scissors that were the good scissors, and you were never allowed to touch them or use them, and I always lusted for these scissors, so I'm really protective of my scissors now. In fact, I have two pairs of these because when other members of my family take them, I go as ballistic as my mother used to, just because, for nostalgic reasons. Anyway, so I'm going to cut this to this part. Now, I tried this before, and I did it this way, and I ripped these, and that was a complete disaster. So clearly, don't do that. Okay, so now we've got this here, right? And I'm looking at this, at this little drawing here. So this drawing seems to suggest that you do this. Ah, yes, it worked, okay. So I do this. And I'm gonna kind of crease these things on the side. Crease, boom. And now, just crease it, and there you go. Wow, it worked. Can you believe that? Okay, I'm screwing it up again. But yes, all right. So in principle, this works. All right, but you see, this is what I'm talking about. You see that? Anyway, I'll try and do better on my real one. This, as I said, is just a dummy to see how you do it. But the thing about this book is, here it is. It's like a piece of paper, but it's actually a, a, a book. It has a cover, two, two pages, four pages, six pages, and a back cover. So it's not just a folded piece of paper, it's actually like a little book. And, and then what you can also do, that the Jill did that's really cool, is you can open it up and you can have the whole thing. But then you can fold it back up and, hey presto, it's a book. Okay, so that's the first stage. And now, what, what's going to go on these pages? That's the next question. Okay, so I have an idea for this book, and it's going to be about the inner critic. It's going to be like a little variation of a book that I'm writing called Shut Your Monkey. Um, and so it's going to have, so what I did is I'm writing an outline. So page one, I know it's going to go there. Page two, page three, page four and five, six, seven. No, that's wrong. One, two, three, four. Oh yes, this is five. See, this is why I made this outline. That's seven and that's eight. So. And these are spreads because I'm thinking about like what, so then I did this, right? So, so this is the cover, but then on the cover, because this book is so short, I'm going to actually start the story on the cover. And then I have these various spreads. So, and they seem to correspond pretty well with, with these things, you know, and again, I want to kind of continue on the back, but I want it to feel like a cover. So that's the structure of the book. And now I just have to think about the design, and I'll be honest with you, I'm going to go off and think about the design and come back and talk to you some more once I've thought about it, because I'm a little murky, and frankly, I don't want to embarrass myself by showing you all my creative process on camera, but I'll be back in a second. Give me a second.
All right, I have kind of a basic idea for a layout. I'm gonna have this cover with a monkey on it. And then I've just, I've scrolled out kind of what the different images are gonna be and how they are going to fit into this layout. So it's, now that I have a design, now I have to go and, and make the, not the dummy version, which is just a lousy paper, but to try and see what I can do to make a nice, big, bigger book. All right, so this is Bristol paper. It's a bit nicer and thicker. You see this one it already has dirt on it, so I'm not gonna use it. I'll go to the next one. Here we go, closing it. Boink. Ah, oh, man. That does not bode well. Smacking the camera around, knocking it out the window. Anyway, here we go. So I'm gonna take this piece of paper, and the same as with the other one, I'm going to, this paper doesn't fold as nicely. So you get these cracks, but. Okay, well, I've done this before, so I'll do it quickly and effortlessly and perfectly this time. <clears throat> All right, there it is. Uh, whoops, as you can see, not quite perfect. The pages don't perfectly fit, but, uh, well, there you have it. Anyway, let's do something that I'm better at which is ink. So what I'm doing is I'm taking basic indie ink and I'm putting it in my palette. Now I'm taking a, a brush pen and you can vaguely see that I had started doing this in diluted ink, but I gave up on that, so just ignore it. But here I'm just basically doing a drawing of the monkey and I'm painting him with diluted ink as well. And now I'm starting to sketch in some of the other characters. Again, just using a brush pen because it moves quickly and Here's, here's the monkey. Oh, by the way, I, you'll notice that I, I uh, labeled each of these pages with a pencil in the corner just so I know where the hell I am as I do it. Um, and I'm just moving quickly, drawing fun, fast, monkeys, speech bubbles, all kinds of stuff. I'll explain to you what this is later on, so don't worry about that part. But uh, just enjoy how incredibly fast I draw. I'm joking. This is actually speeded up so we don't all fall asleep in the process. And I quite like parts of these drawings. But anyway, so there it is. It's basically all done in black ink. And now I'm going back and I'm adding more color. I say color, it's actually colorlessness, but it's um, various shades, dilutions of ink and water, just to give me a great scale. I did the whole thing, then I go back over it and just add some more stuff as it dries to give it dimension and add different degrees of uh, coloredness. Now I'm just taking a finer pen and adding a few little details just to make my drawings a little sharper. All right, well, I've done my drawing more or less. And now what I want to do is have a nice cup of tea and think about what the words are going to be. I have a vague sense of which direction they're going and basically what they're going to say, but I want to kind of think about the actual words and then I'm going to transfer them onto these pages of this book. Mm -hmm. That'll be fun. Okay, despite the conventional wisdom, I do my lettering freehand and I use a dip pen, which is dangerous, but I live for danger, you know? So I'm just kind of writing this out quickly, making it up as I go, um, and doing different size letterings, trying to fit it all in perfectly. Now that it's done, I mean, I like the gray, but there's something missing in it. I want it to have a bit more pizzazz so i'm getting out some red gouache this is acrylic gouache it's kind of an acryloid gouache or a gouacheistic acrylic i'm not sure but i like it it's bright it's uh easy to work with and i just dilute it with some water and add some details now for some reason i get in my mind this idea of adding these kind of weird halos to my monkeys and, um, you know, I can't explain it. There's something sort of vaguely Japanese looking about it to me, but uh, 
my real my main goal is just to add little hints of color that will give it a bit more interest okay I'm done I spent about uh, two hours or so uh, making this book writing it drawing it and painting it and now it's it's done here it is shutting my monkey and the monkey is saying I'm the voice in Danny's head I'm happy to tell you all the ways he sucks and here we see the monkey up here in the corner and he's saying that sucks you're a hack and here I am saying ah and it says the monkey tells me all the things I can't do mustn't do why they'll lead to disaster why I should avoid any kind of risk especially creative risk and the monkey is saying my ch this is a painting of the monkey and here you see me as an artist and he's saying my chin isn't that big and I say you're right sigh and now we see the my mother with the monkey on her shoulder and they're both saying you'll put your eye out and down here it says the monkey showed up when I was little he was the voice of my parents hardwired into my brain and here we see a monkey policeman and he's saying you want to break your damn full neck and down here it continues but years later he's still around protecting me and here we see a painting of me punching myself in the face and knocking myself out and it says fighting the monkey doesn't work he knows all my weaknesses pow ouch and now we see me on a giant pile of ideas working and it says instead I have to just keep making stuff and wait to judge when I have a huge pile of ideas big enough to crush the monkey and down here we see the monkey being crushed by that giant pile and the final page you see the monkey with a nice gag on him and the, at the top it says the world needs all your creative ideas don't let anyone stop you from making them.